Good day, everybody. Welcome to the 10th episode of Bush TV. Today, I'm chilling with Uchawi Gazi. Hello. And how are you today? I'm good. You good? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me a bit about yourself, Uchawi Gazi. I'm Uchawi Gazi. Uchawi Gazi is young. Yeah. Yeah. Uchawi Gazi is real name, mm. but I prefer Chai Gazi because I've mm. always been called by my clan name and I'm from the Eastern Cape, okay. um, from a small town called Ibiwa and in that small town I'm from a smaller township called Ibiwa. Yeah. And music, poetry, where did that all begin in your journey of growing up, you know? Because um, I don't, you know, people like to do things at an older age or a younger age when they develop the music background you have, when the poetry you have. Um, well, it started quite early. Uh, it started quite early. Well, with music, I remember, I think, Nandi Kwabi, when I started singing with <laughs> Juniors. When I started singing with Juniors, and I was terrible. No one wanted to sit next to me. Like, really? <laughs> I was terrible. No one wanted to sit next to me because Nandi was like, I was that bad. And then I grew up, and I didn't want to sing. I started writing, and then I was just writing. I started off just watching TV because I watch TV like religiously. And I was watching TV and I would see these kids with their diaries, dear diary, and I'm like, that's cool, I want to do that. So I took a book and it was like, I just took a book because we didn't have diaries. Yeah. So I just took a book and I was like, dear diary, dear diary, but I didn't know what to say to, to the diary. So then um, that's when I, I started writing my thoughts, my visions, and all of that, and it turned into poetry some way, somehow. When I would read my stuff, I would tell to my friends. Yes, 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 writing. yes. So I'd share stuff and I'd be like, oh, that's good, that's nice. Read that again or oh, share oh, that again. And that's where you kind of found the inspiration. Oh, no, I got this, I got this. And then I started <laughs> writing more and more and more and more. And I also started sharing, you know, because I was always like in the spot like in school. Mm -hmm. I was always involved like, then he let me was out of oh, I got poor so I'm a poor so. She's just always, <laughs> <laughs> she's just always doing something. Yes. So yeah, um, that's where it started. And started also, recording, obviously. Then I started recording. Um, I didn't like it when I first recorded. The first time I recorded, I was, didn't like it. Uh, it was in 2008. Uh, I was still in high school, mm. so I was recording with this um, group of guys that were like hip hop. Okay. And because I wrote, and some some way somehow I was like the first rap I ever wrote. I was like, yo, I'm so excited! I want to share this with this guy that I know that. Mm, 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 mm. So I shared it with them, and they were like, come to the studio. So I went to the studio, we recorded, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I, just know what I'm doing. I don't like how I sound. Mm. Obviously, self conscious issues and all that came up, and I was like, nah. So you have a little bit of insecurities yeah, now and then like, nah. in the studio, kicking it with the boys. So I was like, nah, nah, this is not me. But everyone else was in break, so I was like, So when I think it, if you can jump like genre, yeah, I feel so. Like, you tell me you started. You know, with the hip hop boy, you started with rap, and you know, you're on the mic, and you said you didn't like it. How did you get to Afro Soul? Um, the Afro Soul was already there, it was already there. Um, it's just that I didn't really like because, okay, I think how I moved from rap to Afro Soul, yeah, because I listened to Blue, Erika Blue, so I used to listen to a lot of jazz because my mom used to like jazz a lot. Um, group maintenance, oh, cool. all of these people. Yes, yes, so I yes. used to listen to them like a lot and when my mom wanted all my mom, my sisters, everyone in the house wanted to move lyrics to a song because I'm that person who was always in front of that TV and in front of that radio recording <laughs> songs and writing lyrics. So I would be writing lyrics for everyone. So then I think that's where also the, the, the writing of music started because I started practicing by writing other people's lyrics because yes. I wanted to learn them. Okay. And other people wanted to learn and I was like, the person will just transcribe That's pretty thing. smart. You listen to that, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, then I started writing my own music. So, I, I guess the influence me coming to Afro Soul came from that. And me writing in this house is basically just because I'm mm. like, I'm not going to go to the West. I'm not going to go to the West. It goes well. 
and I listened to all oh, System Pure, the System Pure done, I came with okay. that, it was because it was like something that no one had ever heard of before. I was so in love with her music, I was so in love, I was taken away, and in this time so much, I also went um, solo, so, and she, just, she did the things, and then she came up with the art album, people were awkward. Then I was like, you know what, God, if you could just take me now, I'm done. You know, so I I grew with those influences and also yeah, yeah, the game. Bang the bang, I'm not close. It's not bang. You know, it doesn't make you have to feel where you are. You are going like you are going like get to me all the time. You know, which will not bring joy, will not bring love, and all of that. And all of those things I loved so much. So that's that's the influence. That's where the inspiration came from in getting the Afro song. And who were your first features or who was it? Who did you first work with? Like in terms of getting your career there, getting onto the platform, and then you know releasing the first song to who would be your next artist. How did you decide all of them? How did that come about? Um, yo, I, I feel like the in the Miami has not really been my choice, um, but it's something that I had to do, whether mm. I liked it or not. I just had to do it. So the first time, um, the the first time I, I started coming because I had a break. I didn't sing, I didn't write, I didn't do anything. Mm. I was not performing for anyone. Um, and then I was forced because we were actually organizing an event for my Julio Archives in UWC. Oh, okay. So um, I was pushed by a friend. She can sing, she must sing for this event. Like, oh, I don't want to sing, I don't want to sing, oh, don't do that to me. And you were crying. <laughs> you know, I sang, after I performed, I was like, oh God, I missed this, you know. From then, um, I was just sitting with some guys from my um, SIP, close to my aunt's thing. So we were just sitting, chilling, drinking, you know, enjoying ourselves. And they, it happened that we jammed, and they heard me sing. And they were like, no, you need to come and record. So I recorded those songs. Yeah. We were just playing around. We shared those songs with people, and everyone was crazy about the songs. So I was like, okay, let me take this seriously. Let me take it a step further. Mm -hmm. Then I went and I recorded, um, and I went to Ilo, um I am a drunk who's in Kylie Chan. Okay, I yes, recorded yes. the first song with him, Bushya um, Baike. After I did that, I then shared the song again with people. They loved it. And I was like, okay, let me do a full EP. I did the full EP. I shared it with people. And yeah. By the way, sorry, I missed one question. I hear you have very good. I mean, I hear you have a good educational background. Okay. So, I mean, you know, how did you kind of balance the two, you know, between Ntolo? And then being so educated, you know? Okay, so me being educated, um, I, I actually didn't want to study what I studied because mm. I knew I loved the what arts. What did you study? Um, no, I knew I loved the arts even before I finished my matric. Mm. No one really believed yeah, so so I was going to What are you, you going to be? For Why? I was, <laughs> what do you know? Like, that that's for certain people, like people in Joburg. Yes, like, yes. How are you going to make money? How are you going to sustain yourself with that? No, it's not going to happen. You need to go and find a real career. A real career. So I went and I was like, okay, I don't know what I want to study, but okay, I'm. Because maybe that's not a real career. <laughs> you no, know, that's not a real career. But then, out of my own curiosity on things that I wanted to understand about the world and how the world works and the dynamics involved in you know, power structures and all of that, mm -hmm. then I went and I did my BA and I majored in politics and philosophy. Wow. Um, wow. I finished my degree. When I finished my degree, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just still didn't see myself in a corner office or you know, just working somewhere. It's like, uh, you know, this art thing doesn't want to back off. Let me stand further. I'm going to figure it out. Okay. I did my honors in development studies, but when I was in my honors, I was like, yo, I can't fake this anymore. I don't belong here. I belong on stage. Well, at least you got that degree and that honors. I you know, so yeah. you still got that. I didn't get the honors because I, oh, I, okay. I dropped out. I was like, no, I'm not going to fake it anymore. So I went and I signed up with an acting agency and I started acting. Okay. I started acting, I was doing good. Um, I was doing good and then slowly but surely the music came in. As I told you the story of how mm, the music mm, mm. came in and yeah. And where do you perform? Where does the Chawigazi perform at the garden? Where do you find the Chawigazi? Uh, you know, well, where do you uh, find Chawigazi? The biggest stage that I've been excited and I'm still excited over because it just happened. I was performing at the Rand Strip Down Culture. Okay, okay, um, that's in Kailija. Yeah, 
powered by Red Bull. So yeah, they have this new platform that they're opening up for young up and coming artists that they believe wow. in. So they opened up that platform for me and I performed and ran and it's still big, you know, even though the event is not only really here, I did it, I performed and I'm here. But it, it's 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 the greatest accomplishment thus far that I had. Um, and yeah, there's more to come, so everyone just keep following my pages, like my pages, and I'll keep updating everyone if I have gigs anyway. Then yeah, give them your handles, give them your handles, give the people your handles. My handle is Chawigazi underscore artist, and for Twitter it's Chawigazi A, so yeah. You heard that guys, Chawigazi underscore, and for Twitter, Chawigazi A. So tell me something, what do you think of the Cape, Town, the Cape Town platform. Like, I mean, I hear from artists that Cape Town is, is one of the places that doesn't really put artists on a platform. So what do you think about that? What do you think about you and your journey, you know, coming up here in Cape Town and obviously being out and down a lot of It's hard. Um, everything that everyone is saying that um, it's hard to break into the industry if you are in Cape Town. It's hard for you to get recognized or even get platforms to be open for you as a Cape Town mm. artist. It's like there's a mentality that if you are an artist and you're in Cape Town, then you're not that good. Yes. We can't invest in you or you're not worth the investment. They'd rather bring people from Joburg to come and perform here whilst there are artists here. But then again, I'd say I don't really blame them because us as the artists as well, we're not doing enough to make sure that we are seen, you know. It's like we, we, we already expect I'm an artist, I'm good, I believe I'm good, this person and that person believes that I'm good, therefore everyone else should just be on board, you know. Um, there's certain things that we don't do to distinguish ourselves that the Joburg artists are doing and are winning at, you know, being in a business here, you need to brand yourself, mm -hmm. you need to make sure your brand stands out and you need to make sure that you know, people see what you want them to see in you. So people just, they, 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 they play around, I'd say, they play around. And those that don't play around, that actually take this thing seriously, it's quite hard, you know, to change people's mindsets that everything you need, that and is just art, is in you. you know. So it's it's a struggle. I don't really know what, what, what is the hold up or what, what the problem is. But in any case, I'm a problem child. I'm gonna bring things. I'm gonna do it right here. That's the way. That's the way. <laughs> that's the way. That's the way. Then that uh, I mean, there's no other way. You gotta make it right from home. Okay. And I hear you got businesses. You know, you're working. You're you, you're not just a musician. You know. Yes. So um, yeah, Charlie guys. Who's who's the business Charlie guys? The business Charlie guys. I have a company that I started, which is Kaya Kwezi. Okay. And as I'm doing the music, I released my music under my own record label, mm. it falls under my company as well. And also the intention behind the company is also to do events. Um, and I also have an academy that's also dedicated to wow. the stuff that I spoke about, that artists that I feel that they don't see and they're not really putting What's the academy in. called? Um, it's Kaya Kwezi. Oh, it's Kaya, Kaya Kwezi. So okay. Okay, so the name of the company is Kaya Kwezi and then everything falls under, under. the company. So it's Kaya Kwezi Music, Kaya Kwezi Events, Kaya Kwezi Academy and Kaya Kwezi Lifestyle. So I'm just pushing the lifestyle apart because I feel that you know, we've got so much in our culture that is rich, that makes us stand out as people and also the way we approach art is different but it's just that we don't care yeah. yeah, fair enough, fair enough. We don't capitalize on the things. That and that's it, guys. You heard it right here on Bush TV. It's and you know it's your favorite presenter, Ulindo Kusinga Nyusa. Right now, I'll take you to a performance by Uchawe Gazi at Rand. Check it out. <laughs>
I'm not 